I'm just in the hospital here seeing my son. Hold on, this isn't going to work with a face mask, is it? Okay, hopefully you can hear me better. Now, my son's in hospital just for a, a minor procedure, nothing serious. But even though it's minor, he's hooked up to all the normal monitoring gear you see in a hospital. All the stuff that is there to alarm you in case something goes wrong. And the same applies for your database. If your database is, even if it's just your stock standard database, and there's nothing wrong with it, you should always be monitoring it for something that might harm it. And the biggest harm is a security issue. So we have a tool called DBSAT, which does this monitoring for you, just like in the hospital. Let's take a look at it. So the first thing you'll need to do is head over to support.oracle.com, log in and go to MozNote 213.8254.1. That's the master page for DBSAT. Read through the bits and pieces and eventually we'll get to a point where you click on I agree. Once you've agreed with the terms and conditions, then it'll pop up with a download, a simple zip file. Pick somewhere sensible on your machine, whether it's a server or a PC in this case, and simply unzip the files and we're ready to start looking at DBSAT. Once it's unzipped, fire up your favorite editor and look at the DBSAT executable. It'll be either the batch file for Windows or just the shell script file for Linux. What you wanna make sure is that the couple of utilities that need zip and unzip can be found in the right places. So simply scroll down, adjust them as required. Most Oracle software homes ship with unzip and zip, so you might not need to change it, but just double check those things, otherwise the routine probably won't work correctly. DBSAT also uses Python through some of its processing, so make sure you've got a copy of Python installed, just make sure it's on the path as well, otherwise DBSAT won't work. Once those checks are done, just fire DBSAT with no parameters and it gives you the standard usage facilities. And the most common ones you'll do are collect to go analyze the database to pick up information, and then you'll do a report on the information that's been collected. It's a two-phase process. So the first thing I'll do is I'll run a collect and I'll pass in the credentials to connect to my database. It will turn away for a while, and then it prompts me for a password into which to zip these files. It's a effectively set of metadata that you can report on. I'll type in a simple password and the result is done. Now the next thing is to process that. And the way I do that is to use the reporting component of DBSAT. So I just pass in the file. I don't need the extension. I need the file I collected. It'll unzip that and then run its various analysis facilities to come up with a lovely HTML report in which I can now go through the findings, the monitoring, so to speak, like my son in hospital of the database. Let's take a look at what's in my HTML file. I'll get an assessment date and time, so the encouragement here is for you to run these regularly, and then I get the database identity, just so you know if you're filing these for multiple servers, which one it reports to. And then similar to like an AW report or many of the reports we produce out of the Oracle database, you then get a summary, and you, these are hyperlinks you could click to wherever you want to in the report if you need to rapidly get to any particular section. I've got my database version, then it's got information about what patch cycle I'm up to. The color coding here is useful because it's giving us our impression of what it thinks are urgent things to look after. So red means bad, green means good, and so forth. I've got my list of user accounts in this database so I can look for any rogues. I've got those that are in the protected table spaces when maybe they shouldn't be. I've got the sample schemas because whilst they might be useful in a development environment, in production environments, then they possibly increase the range of attack vectors that hackers could be after. I've got inactive users. I've got users with expired passwords. I'm good to go there, but I've also got users with the default passwords and it's upset about that. Once again, this is a non-production database, but it's going through all the various user sort of scenarios to make sure you're not leaving any holes open in your database. I've got miscellaneous information about profiles and password verification functions and all the various things that I want to ensure are in good working order to make sure that when people do connect to my database, they've got password expiry, they've got, for example, appropriate links on their password so they can't just type in three letter passwords and the like. It's all about making sure that the user integrity of passwords is good. Then I'm going through all the various access rights that people might have, looking for particular roles that might have overzealous or overenthusiastic access rights. I've deliberately created a user on this database with a lot of privileges, so it'll pick up in some of these reports. I've got users with sys privileges, I've got users with the DBA privileges, I've got users with other powerful roles, etc. 
And then I get into all of the audit facilities. So I'm checking to make sure that I've got the right auditing facilities turned on, making sure that no one has access to tamper with the auditing. Lots and lots of coverage here of the various audit facilities we have in the Oracle database to make sure they're all working to your advantage. And there's some not so obvious ones. Here's for example, it checks to see if the version number is contained in the instance name, because that's one of those things you perhaps don't wanna be advertising to the outside world. My database is called PDB21. As you can imagine, it's a version 21 database. That's probably not a good thing in terms of letting someone know what version it is, because if a publicly known bug exists or security issue exists for a particular version, then giving someone the instance name with the version in it might be just the access they needed to go hacking away. Then we get down to the things that might be reaching outside your database in terms of the operating system via directories or via database links to other facilities. This database might be secure, but if someone gets in, they might be able to use database links to get to other databases in your organization that are maybe not so secure. But as you can see, it's a very cool report with lots of details, and it's trivial to run. This is the kind of facility, like monitoring in the hospital, that you hope just consistently comes out with green lights, no red lights, but you just run it on regular basis on all your databases and have a process where someone just goes through and double checks on the output. In that way, it's an easy, no cost way of ensuring that you have at least established a good base level of security in all your databases. DBSAT, Database Security Assessment Tool, check it out, it's free, just download it from Oracle Support.